Join me in this video as I take on the challenge of building a home emergency backup power system using the Lee Time 3500 watt all-in-one solar inverter charger. But I'll be going through what the unit's all about, how to use it, how to set it up, and then we'll check out the performance of it and see how it actually performs. One of the main advantages of using an all-in-one solar inverter charger is the ease of the setup. You're not going to have to tie three different components together. This particular unit, the Lee Time 3500 watt all-in-one, has a 3500 watt pure sine wave inverter, an 80 amp MPPT solar charge controller, as well as a 40 amp AC charger. You don't have to build a wire harness or get a lot of extra components in order to utilize those three items together. So let's open this up and we'll have a look and see what comes in the box. We've got a product manual and we have a bag here with a bunch of parts and pieces, wire connectors, MC4 connectors, some screws and mounting hardware, even some heat shrink in here, a screwdriver, all kinds of little goodies that come in that bag. And then the inverter itself. MPPT maximum PB input is 145 volts or 4,400 watts. 80 amps on the uh, max charge current, and then AC input voltage 120 volts, max charge current is 40 amps. You've got your screen up here with four buttons, and some LED lights, a couple of holes up here for mounting, and I notice there's a hole in the center that you access through this door to uh, mount the bottom as well. Both sides on the top have a vent cover. Looks like it's removable with a small Phillips screwdriver. And there is kind of a screen in there. So I, I believe it pulls the air in from the top on the sides and blows it out the bottom. We've got an AC input breaker here. A reset button on the breaker. Here's the hole on the back I was telling you to mount so you can tie the bottom up against the wall another screen and intake on this side. So looking at the uh, data plate here, we've got AC input 90 to 140 volts, maximum bypass input current. So if you're using it as a bypass or like a UPS where you have AC coming in and AC going out on the other side up to 40 amps, frequency 60 hertz. AC output 3500 watts, 29 amps. And the PV input, you got 4,400 watts max. Recommended open circuit voltage of your solar array is 60 to 115 with a max of 145 volts. Maximum input current is 50 amps. On the MPP output for the charger, 4,200 watts, 80 amps of current, 48 volts DC for battery, and the voltage range is between 40 and 60 volts DC. Maximum AC charge current was 40 amps. And this is lithium, lead acid, or a user menu for setting up your own parameters. It tells you down here, do not use outdoors for indoor use only, which is what I'll be using it for. So looking at the bottom of the unit with all the connections, you've got an on off switch here. You've got AC input, AC output, I guess that's not applicable. You got a USB-B RS-485. If you're gonna connect this to another lead time product or a product that will allow you to be able to link them together and it'll transfer data through this cable. Got some dry contacts here for other items that you may wanna connect. Here's where your 48 volt battery inputs, your plus and minus come in. And then over here is where the PV comes in. Of course, you can see these two fairly large fans here. And I believe they pull the air through the unit over the components and heat sinks and then blows the air out the bottom. And there is a screw over here that you can use to ground the case. If you are connecting AC to it, it'll ground it through the AC inputs, which is how it's gonna be set up in my situation. Now to access the connections, you need to take this plate off and there's one Phillips screw on either side. And then this will remove. You can see where your AC wires will come in. You've got AC input, these three. You've got a ground line, a neutral, and then the output, a line, neutral, and a ground. Over here, you've got your PV input. And then down there, you've got the two connectors for the positive and minus coming from the 48 volt battery. 
Now I'll be using 16 cell, which will be 51.2 volt batteries for my setup. All right, here's a look inside. I'm no expert on these electronics. A couple of big heat sinks. Then they've got this plastic shroud on here to create a tunnel for the incoming air to pass over the heat sinks as it pulls it out of the box on the bottom there. And they do supply ends for your wiring that they prefer you use in order to connect to these AC connectors as well as the PV side. Four gauge wire is what I'll be using. That's what the manual recommends for the battery terminals. But anyway, for those experts, you guys can have a look and let me know what you think. I did kind of jiggle some of this wiring and everything seems to be tight. I think it looks pretty good. All right, let me get this buttoned up and then we'll get started on getting this mounted. So I've got the screws in that. And then uh, I'm just going to screw this to the bottom of my shelf up here with four wood screws. And then on the back side, I mounted a 2x4 just so I get the proper spacing. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but this is just the way I chose to do it. And then I marked where that screw is going to go to hold the bottom of the uh, unit down. So it'll actually be hanging off of three screws, two at the top and then one to hold the bottom in. Four screws up there into that shelf that's bolted to the wall. Hanging right next to a transfer switch that I've got connected to my 12 volt system. But once I switch over to the 48 volt, then I'll be coming out of the bottom of this unit over here and into the transfer switch. So this way I can pick and choose part of my house that I want to uh, use with my solar and not have to do a contract with the power company. This is a six circuit transfer switch. I just picked this up off Amazon. I'll link it in the description. Uh, so far it's been working real good. And then uh, you can pick and choose what circuit you want to use. And I'm going to use all 120 volt circuits because this is a 120 volt unit. It is not 240. So for my initial setup, I'm going to just connect 800 watts of solar to this 3500 watt lead time all in one. And I just wanted to show you I've got 80 volts open circuit. Now it's uh, 81 volts, which is above the minimum requirement for PV input. And just to make a note here, I'm only hooking up 800 watts, but that's one fifth of the maximum I can put onto this inverter, which is 4,400 watts. So just for initial testing, we'll be able to hook that up and see how it works. And then as you can see, here's where I've got my solar coming in with a breaker so I can disconnect the solar breaker down here at the bottom from my golf cart battery. And for initial testing, I'm going to be connecting some 10 gauge house wire just to hook this up so we can test it out. The recommended wire size for this, which I will probably set up at a later time, is 8 gauge wire. So let's check with the oscilloscope and see what we have for a sine wave on this inverter. There we go. So a nice, clean, pure sine wave output on this Lee Time 3500 watt inverter. So I'm connected to the six circuit manual transfer switch and uh, I've got some lights, my internet router, my washer and dryer, refrigerator, that sort of thing. If everything's running all at once, I can pull up to around 2,500 watts max. So as I'm getting this set up, that'll be fine. I've got my 10 gauge wire here on the AC output and that's coming in the bottom of this uh, transfer switch. We've got 52.6 volts on the battery. You can see this icon showing that solar is connected going through the MPPT charger, charging the battery, and it's also outputting it with the inverter 120 volts. Now it's early in the morning. The blinking yellow is indicating that the inverter is working. 65 volts now off the PV because it's no longer open circuit and just about 2 amps of output from the solar at the moment. 1.4 amp load. I've just got a couple lights on in the house through that transfer switch. So really cool. There's a lot of information here to be displayed. So this is a simple setup to go uh, off grid or supplement some of your items in your home through a transfer switch. You're not connected to the grid. You're basically off grid with this setup. I need to finalize my wiring and a little better setup. I'll probably just get some eight gauge and come down here through a piece of conduit into the transfer switch instead of having just that bare 10 gauge wire hanging out the bottom. But for a temporary setup, just to test it and see how it works so far, so good. 
All right, we're finally getting a little bit of solar power here. We got seven amps of output right now through the PV. The fans just came on, so let me hold this up here real close. It's actually real quiet, at least so far. When I got it running at max capacity, it might be a little different story, but so far, real quiet on the fan. Here's a quick look at my battery app. And with the sun that I have on the panels right now and the small amount of load I have, I'm only using 1.6 amps of current through the battery, 83 or 0.8 watts. If you use a lead time battery, you can connect with the ports and it'll talk to the inverter and that's ultimately the way to go. But I currently don't have one of those to demonstrate to you here. I'll put links for this inverter in the uh, video description. Any of the items I'm using in this video, I'll put links for them if you want to get more information about them. And I really do like the simplicity. You've only got the three things, your PV input, your battery input, and then the AC out. A couple of screws to hang it on the wall and you're set. But so far I really like it and it's a lot easier to set up than uh, all the separate components. Put a video on the screen now I think you'll enjoy and if you click on that video we'll meet you over there.